Acts chapter 1. It's so custom to stand for the reading of the word of God. Let's try to move a little quickly. Amen. Verse 9. for God. Somebody say amen. amen. It is God birthing the church that he may harvest from the seed that was sown. The seed that was sown was Jesus. He said, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, the Bible says, it bringeth forth much fruit. And you and I and all those who are yet to come and those that have been before us are the harvest of the Lord. Amen, somebody. It is the seed full grown. It is the harvest, the seed that was planted in the earth for three days and for three nights. And that seed rolls up, somebody say amen, and begin to produce fruit after its own kind. The Bible says that we are predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son of God. And so we're born again, not by the will of flesh, not by the will of, of man, but by the will of the Father. And so Pentecost for the church is the harvest of the Lord. The Bible says, pray the Lord of the harvest, for the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. God is looking for people that he can infuse with his character, with his power, and with his anointing. That they can go out, amen, and bring the word of salvation, the gospel of Jesus Christ, to men that they might hear the word and become part of the harvest of the Lord. Somebody say amen. So we are a Pentecostal church. Now when I say that we are a Pentecostal church, I'm not saying that we are a denominational church called Pentecostal. Amen. What I am saying is that we were born on Pentecost, which is a celebration of the harvest of the Lord. And you cannot have a harvest without the seed. And the seed was named Jesus. Somebody say amen. And because of Jesus, we are able to be able to be saved and born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. 
when we talk about being a Pentecostal church, when we talk about being a Pentecostal church, we're talking about a church, amen, that in the beginning moved with authority and moved with power. Somebody say amen. This was a church that was submitted to God. It was a church that was submitted to the power of God. This was a church that walked in the reverence and the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Somebody say amen. And this is the kind of church that mesmerized and amazed everybody it came in contact with. On Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, the move of God was so powerful uh, that God had brought other witnesses from all around the world, from every nation, the Bible says, from under heaven. There were devout men, there were Jewish men, there were all kinds of people there uh, who God had gathered in one place so that they might be a witness to the mighty power of God. I'm here to tell you that the people that are in your circle are not there by accident, but God has positioned them there that they might be able to see the power of God being active and moving in your life. Somebody say Pentecost. Yeah. And this is the day that we celebrate what God has done for us. He said that the power of God shall come upon you, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you so that you might be a witness unto me. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Ghost is not just so you can dance and jump and shout. No, you need to dance and jump and you need to shout and you need to praise God. But the power of the Holy Ghost is so that you might be a witness unto God. He said, first in Jerusalem. Somebody say home. Somebody got to say, got to understand that charity begins at home. Somebody say amen. And it's at home, not at church, not away from your house. Amen. But it's got to start in your very own home. You've got to be a witness. Your children, your family, your spouse, your husband, your wife needs to see you living the life before God. You might say, I'm a witness. Amen. And so they were able to witness what God was doing. Amen. Not just internally, but externally. Uh, somebody say amen. They could see that God was doing something. Amen. This was not a private hidden thing off in the corner. I told uh, the church on Wednesday night that when God lights a man, when God illuminates a man, the Bible says Jesus said in his parable, he does not hide it under a bushel, but he sets it on a candlestick for all men to see. Uh, when God gives you his love, when God gives you his power, when God gives you his ability, when God gives you his anointing, it is not in the mind of God to hide you under some bushel somewhere so nobody can see but you gotta let your light the Bible says so shine among men that they might see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven somebody say amen and so Pentecost really is about us being the church that is a witness to the power of God. We're able to show, not just talk about what's going on down on the inside but people can see uh, that God is working in your life. Uh, they can see the power of God. The Bible says uh, that as they were gathered together on one accord in one place, amen, uh, the Spirit of God came in like a rushing mighty wind uh, and the sound of it, the noise of it, the power of it began to spread out among those who were outside of what was happening in the upper room. Uh, how many here, amen, know that God wants others to be affected uh, by what's going on in your your life. That's why the power, that's what that the power is so powerful that it escapes your realm and goes into somebody else's realm. The Bible says when they had heard what this was going on, the Bible says they marveled at it. They shook their heads at it. They scratched their heads at it. They were trying to figure out what in the world is happening with these men. Uh, how many here know the supernatural is difficult for the natural to comprehend what's happening supernaturally? It's difficult to explain, but it has to be seen. I wish I had somebody here. The supernatural has to be demonstrated. Paul said, I didn't come to you with the excellency of speech, but I came with the demonstration of the power of God. How many here know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe? God have a word for you on to take. This is a day to celebrate that God has anointed you with glory and that he has anointed you, somebody say, with power. Tell somebody I got power. If you got the Holy Ghost, you have got power. I wish I had somebody say, I got power. If you somebody say, power, power. power. And so this is a Pentecostal 
church. Jesus said uh, that those that believe they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen, somebody. This is a church of demonstration. When I talk about a Pentecostal church, uh, I'm not talking about a denominational situation. What I'm talking about is a church uh, that is demonstrating power like we did on the day of Pentecost. Uh, that lives are being changed. Somebody say amen. Uh, and so on the day of Pentecost, they heard this great noise being shut abroad. Uh, and they began to inquire about the noise. And everybody has a different opinion about what's going on. I'm here to tell you that other folk will look into your life and they're not able to figure out what's going on in your life. And they say, well, you're crazy. You are fanatic and don't take all of that. All that dancing and shouting and speaking in tongues and twirling around. Amen. And they will look at it as craziness, as drunkenness, as foolishness. I wish I had somebody here. But Peter rose up out of the midst of those who were up in the upper room and said, wait a minute. Uh, hold on just a tick. Uh, let me clarify what it is that you are witnessing. Uh, these are not drunk as you suppose, being that it's just the third hour of the day. Uh, but this is that which was prophesied by the prophet. Uh, amen, somebody. Uh, this is the word of God being manifested in the lives of these people. Uh, this is a prophecy that was spoken beforehand. I wish I had somebody in here. This is what God has promised me. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. And I was watching something on the news today. Uh, this old man, he was in his 50s. 57 years old and uh, uh, his son had been promising him since he was 8 years old that he would buy him a 57 Chevy uh, and so on his birthday there he is trembling shaking the man could barely speak because in his garage at the age of 57 uh, his son had brought him this 57 Chevy oh y'all hear what I'm saying all he could do was shake and walk around the car y'all not going to talk to me in here I'm here to tell you that what happens on your being a Pentecostal church uh, is God birthing what he has spoken in your life and other people being a witness uh, to what it is that God has spoken beforehand. Somebody say this is a Pentecostal church. Uh, and so what Peter is saying is that what was prophesied now is here. Uh, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, somebody say amen. Uh, you need to have other people see the fully come in your life. Uh, oh, I wish I had some in here. They need to see that you've been holding on to the promises of God. And when they see the power of God, it's going to look like craziness and foolishness to them. But you can tell them, hold on and wait a minute. This is that which has been promised to me by God. And today is a day when God will fulfill his word in your life. You ought to tell somebody it's time to celebrate. Uh, it's time to celebrate the power of God. Uh, somebody holler Pentecost. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Now two things happen. I got to get out of here because we've been here a little bit too long. Uh, but on the day of Pentecost, two things happened. Uh, two different presents arrived from heaven. Uh, the first present that arrived from heaven was called Dunamis. Uh, it was the power of God. It was the creative power of God. It's the kind of power that can make somebody who is late begin to walk. It is the creative power. It's the kind of power that can take somebody who is blind and open up their eyes. It's the kind of power that allows you to go into the room of a sick person when the final rites have been given and lay hands on them and they will pop up living alive and way. It is the dunamis power, the creative power, the explosive, unexplainable power of God down on the inside. Oh, somebody say, when the Holy Ghost comes, you shall receive this power. God not only wants you to receive it, but he wants you to give it. Jesus, when he breathed on his disciples, he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. He said, freely you have received. Y'all not going to keep being here. Freely give. You got to be able to give as good as you receive. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. Being a Pentecostal church does not that all we do uh, is receive. Uh, but we've got to be givers of the power of God. Uh, it cannot just stay contained in the church house. Uh, but we've got to go on the highways and the byways uh, and show the power of God in places uh, where it has yet to be seen. Uh, am I in the right chair? Uh, we've got to have the dunamis power uh, of God, the miracle working power of God. Uh, not just here on Sunday.
there, but it's got to be everywhere throughout the week. Somebody say amen. It is the power of God. It is the ability, somebody say the ability to get results. That's with the power of God, the dunamis, the dynamite. It is the power to change situations and circumstances. It is God's super on your natural. It is God's ability in your inability. It's God's authority. It's God's power. It is the dunamis. Somebody say dunamis of God. So on the day of Pentecost, amen, somebody, the power of God began to take over their bodies. Y'all not going to hear me in here so much so that they took over that tongue. And I'm here to tell you, if you will let God have your tongue, he can guide your life. But when you speak with other tongues, you speak mysteries. You speak prophecies. Somebody say, yeah, the Bible says the tongue is a rudder for the life. It is a rudder for the Bible. Your tongue will guide you. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. That's why you can go out someplace and go into your prayer closet and go that's before you go in the situation and speak the will of God from heaven. Before you walk in the door, I wish I had somebody in here. Tell somebody the Holy Ghost. And so I'm going to give you a tongue that speaks heaven's decree down in the earth. And no, you don't understand. Because it's a language from another land. It's a language from where I'm from, where I've been raised up and seated with him in heavenly, language, in heavenly places. You want to tell somebody I'm bilingual. I'm bilingual. I speak my native tongue and I speak the language from down here. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. If you ever met somebody from another country, they can talk to you in a language that you don't understand and be saying something that you cannot comprehend. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. But how many here know that Paul said, I will pray. I will pray in tongues. I will pray in the spirit. But I will pray with an understanding also. Oh, I wish I had something. Didn't mean he stopped speaking. He just said, I pray. I got an understanding of what I'm talking about. Y'all not going to talk to me in here. That's the kind of power that grabbed that room on the day of Pentecost. It sat upon each of them. The Bible describes it. It was so powerful that it looked like fire. Y'all not going to help me in here. It was so powerful. It looked like they had been set on fire. The Bible says that Jesus would come and baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jeremiah said it like fire. Shut up in my bone. It's a purging fire. It's a Holy Ghost fire. It's a sanctifying fire. It's a purging fire. It's a corrective fire. You ought to tell somebody it's fire. It's a fire that when the devil sees it, it reminds him of his end. When the devil sees me on fire, oh my God, it reminds him that the Lord is for me. Who can be against me? You ought to ask somebody, do you have fire? And so this is, this is the first gift. This is the first gift. Uh, but the Bible, the Bible goes on to say that after they began to say that these men have drunk, Peter said, now wait a minute. I have to now shift from dunamis to exousia. Y'all not going to hear me. This is authority. Y'all not going to hear me. Now you've got to understand here. Peter was a nobody. Y'all not hearing me. Peter was a nobody. Nobody knew who Peter Nobody went. Peter was from a very, uh, 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 from the ghetto. He was from a place nobody respected. He was a fisherman. Y'all not going to hear me. He was not a rich man. He was not a dignitary. He was not well known. But all of a sudden, you've got men from every nation under him. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. You've got black men, white men, poor men, rich men, dignitaries. You've got people of authority. you got Sadducees, Sadducees, Pharisees, all kinds of people. All of a sudden, God gives Peter a authority. Y'all not going to hear me. God, God's gift will make You don't have to listen. You don't have to push your way. God will make a way. So all of a sudden now, Peter. 
Peter is walking in the exousia of God. He said, hold up. He said, this is that which was prophesied by the And he began to give them the word of God. He began to preach to them with power and authority. Y'all not going to hear me anymore. Yes. Yes. And he preached to them so much about Jesus. Come on now. He said, you crucified him, but I know that you did it in ignorance. He meant somebody. Amen. But, he said, if you repent now and be baptized, oh, I wish I had somebody here. Come on. He said, you can be saved. Yes. The exousia, the authority was on him so tough. Uh, the time go, Jesus. Jesus was, the said, when Jesus taught, they say he taught as one with authority. Amen. 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 And so listen here. Let me tell you about how powerful you are. People. All right now. May not know or trust your God. Listen, people will invest in something that you believe in. Yeah. Not because they believe so much in and trust the investment, but they believe in you. That's why good scammers can run a scam. They don't have to win everybody, they just have to win somebody who has some authority or influence over other people. Y'all not gonna hear me. And so what I do is I do good for him and he go tell all his friends who love him. You're not hearing what I'm saying here. And they will follow him right into the mess. Y'all not going to talk to me. What God does for you, y'all don't hear what I say. God anoints you that you can be a, you can be a witness. And even though they don't know your God, they have not come to know Jesus for themselves. They begin to know you. Amen. Y'all not going to hear me in here. Y'all say, well, why are you talking like this? Because Jesus said, if you have seen me, oh, y'all don't hear me. You have seen the Father. And the Bible says that we should be like Christ. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? We are the image of the Son of God in the earth. And if they see the real you, if you have a Pentecostal life, oh, I wish I had somebody here, a life full of power set on fire by God. When men run into you, they cannot help but run into your sin. Ah, come on now. So Peter begins to preach. <laughs> on the birthday of the church. And if my memory serves me right, the Bible says that over 3,000 souls now listen, that goes to show you what kind of audience God gave him. It didn't say everybody got saved, it just said 3,000 of them. So I wonder how many were really there. Now it was just 120 in the upper room. Somebody say amen. amen. But God had gathered crowds beneath them. Y'all not going to hear what I'm saying. Yes. Pentecost is about you reaching your family. Pentecost is about you reaching somebody who's lost. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. P Pentecost is about you fighting and praying and interceding for that soul. Somebody holler Pentecost. Pentecost. When I'm talking about being a Pentecostal church, I'm not talking about just you being in some kind of denominational church. I'm talking about you having a Pentecostal life so that others can be saved. Say amen. Amen. Pentecost is about you being a witness and having a demonstration with power from on high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today is your birthday. Yes. I said, today is your birthday. Amen. And you should go out and celebrate. Hallelujah. 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 All of heaven is on your side today. 
Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Oh, yes. I said all of heaven is on your side today. Yes, hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. How many of you know that God came to celebrate the harvest? Amen. Hallelujah. How many can need loved ones saved? Want them saved. Amen. Praying for them to get saved. Amen. Today is their day. Come on, come on. Am I in the right church? Amen. Come to the right place. I say today is their day. Yes. I believe in delivery for somebody on the day. Amen. Amen. Somebody need healing in their body. Thank you know somebody? Yes. It's the, today is when the gifts of presence. Oh, I wish you knew today was your birthday. Yes. Hallelujah. Today is the day to make your requests known. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you. Time, I'm, I'm out of time. I, I, wanted, I wanted to really preach. Wait for it. Jesus told him to go and wait. Somebody say wait for it. If you've been waiting for it, today is your day to have it. Oh, yes. yes. I'm talking to my own self. Hallelujah. I said you've been waiting for it. Pentecost is the day. Pentecost means the wait is over. Thank you. That's another sermon. I had five sermons in one sermon. Somebody say amen. Amen. There ain't no way in the world I can preach it all. Plus, Dr. Sheila preached already, really. Say amen. Amen. God is good. Now listen, I need you to do me a favor. Listen, I need you to do me a favor. We're we ready to go. I need you to do me a favor. Because y'all in Charlotte, we didn't lay hands on you. Amen to Amen. We didn't lay hands on you. But I want you to listen. I want you to learn a principle right now. Can you learn a principle real quick? Amen. We ain't got all day. So I'm to say amen. amen. I want you to bless the woman of God today. Amen, amen to Amen. Can you help me do that today? Amen. Would you put an offering in our hand? I'm going to ask her to come and grab a basket and stand up here. Somebody say amen. amen. Y'all not talking to me. Amen. Quickly, quickly, come on. Just let her hold it. I want you to bring a gift. Come on. Get rid of it. Thank you. 